and uh, of this late night text message tell us what we were going to sing. She always sends uh, uh, an email or, or you know, a, a site where you just click on it and the music for the week comes up. And Lord have mercy. I don't know how fast I was, I was glad there were no highway patrolmen. Because <laughs> I started singing that, 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 that joy and, and, and you ought to hear uh, the two of the different versions of how that sung. And if ever there was a time I wish I could have been at rehearsal, it was this Tuesday. Because I want to let y'all know now, there's a, there's a, there's another, there's another, there's some things to be added to that now. And, and, and I, next time. She told me, Pastor, you know you didn't make rehearsal. I said, yes, ma'am, I do know. You can sing, but don't, don't try nothing. So I just sat right there in my, my business. <laughs> oh. Mm. Let's see. The sacrificial initiative to embrace Emmanuel. The sacrificial initiative to embrace Emmanuel. That, that, that word interpreted for us literally means God is with us. What, what's required in order for God to be with us? What's necessary? For his abiding presence is grace and love to be with us. Well, what's necessary? Let's pray. Father, thank you. Your grace, your mercy is sufficient. We praise you for this kickoff that you've given us for a new year. You reminded us of the hope that we find in our Savior. You shared with us the joy that comes from a real relationship where we know you as our Father, our parent, and we are your children. Lord, we thank you for the peace that passes understanding that hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now, Lord, we're going to talk about this concept called love. For you said, and they shall know that you, we are your children when we demonstrate love, love for you, love for our brothers and sisters, love for our family and community. And also, God, we've got to have love for ourselves. Thank you. These four concepts, and I praise you, God, for another opportunity to stand and to share a word May it be fit in season, and may it not return to you void, but accomplish your will and your purpose. For it's in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Sacrifice and initiative. We don't hear. in a sermonic or ching. You all 
all forgive, excuse us for a minute. Uh, thank you. That's better? All right. You don't hear these terms, especially during a Christmas season. It's all about jingle bells. And it's all about gifts and decorations. It's all about the, the cakes and the pies and the group or the family members or friends that come from near and far to spend time together. Great, great, great dialogue goes on concerning the narrative about how Jesus was born. And, and we can talk about the manger and we can talk about the wise men. We, 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 we can talk about God so loved the world that he gave his only son. But sacrifice and taking the initiative to be sacrificial. We don't talk about that much. But in this, this, this closing Advent celebration, these two words seem to be significant in lieu of how Jesus was born. One of the things that can, can, can really distort our understanding of what it means to be a believer is when we get caught up in all of the traditional and the, the knowledge of Christmas that we all have. And sometimes we don't see this in context of what is it calling a believer to do, to be. And so we want to look at this, this narrative differently because sometimes we, we put Mary and Joseph in some sort of an unreal world. Like, like there was something magical about their environment, the context in which uh, the Savior was born. I want to let you all know that Joe and Mary lived around folk just like all of you and all of us. You see, when the record comes in and says to us, the birth of Jesus was on this wise, there's some things we missed. So let's move now. Let's, let's, let's take a look at this because we don't want to be here long. God's will does not conform to sociological norms. God's will, it, 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 it's, it's, it's not consistent with how folk feel, what folk think, how they think all the things ought to be. It, it doesn't conform. God is not required. To, 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 to bring his will in alignment with what's politically correct. Because I submit to you that nothing, there is nothing at all normative about how Jesus was born. This, this thing of immaculate conception, nothing there, there's nothing normal about that. A woman, pregnant, Though engaged, now you know, and I know, this whole concept of purity and being, it ain't mine, and being with child by the Holy Ghost, you know how that was received. Whole lot of folk start talking about having a child and they're going to blame it 
on God? Now, you know that ain't so. In our culture, in our society, everybody knows how children are born. Mary and Joseph are engaged. But all of a sudden, Mary finds herself full of child. And then when Joseph gets wind of it, she tells him, the Lord did this to me. All right, now, you go home and tell somebody that. Folk will look at you like I'm looking now. Remember now, they didn't have, they didn't have social media. To, in today's world, if somebody comes up and tells you, you know, I've never, you know, I'm a, I'm a good girl in a bad girl situation. But it ain't my fault. While I was sleeping, the Holy Ghost came. And now I'm in the predicament I'm in. Hmm? It's a red SUV on this side. All right, red SUV. You got it? It's taken care of? Everything good? All right, now, we'll focus back. Bring it on back, bring it on back. Now, we were at the part of social media being a means of communication of what's going on. We used to call it, back in the day, the grapevine. You see all these folk laughing? See, because Gladys Knight helped us with that. I heard it through the grapevine. Y'all know, they say, Mary, 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 Mary pray. See, the thing says, it was discovered. Who discovered it? Who, how did they find out? the signs of being pregnant are apparent. And if you got some wise old grandmamas around, you don't have to tell them nothing. Oh, because I remember. <laughs> Grandmama, yes, son, I just want to let you know. Miss Martha Cunningham said, I don't believe this boy getting ready to tell me something I already know. I done look in his face and I see it all over. How you see somebody pregnant all over? <laughs> Joseph and Mary were subjected to the same kind of kitchen table gossip. The text says, though, Joseph being an honorable man, being a man of faith, a man of stature, a man of purpose and substance, did not want to break up the engagement publicly. He didn't, he didn't want to, to victimize Mary by the, by the already news. Because it's amazing how quick news travels when it has a little bit of shade with it. Y'all hear me? And so the text says he was ready to conform to the norms of his society, of their day, their time. But he didn't want to do it in a, in a manner that was, that was ostentatious, that was out there showy. He didn't want to do it broadcasting. He didn't want folk to know what had happened because he really loved Mary. You know love will make you do some things. And, and when love is authentic, love does not want to cause any harm. Love does not want to, want to, to, to puff itself up and be boastful. 
No, 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 love is kind. Love is considerate. Love cares and has compassion. And even though you may find yourself in a mess and in a mix-up, love will constrain what you do when you find yourself in those predicaments. Joseph loved her, but he wasn't ready to deal with something that was not what he felt his responsibility. You can't blame the brother. Can't blame. It takes a special man to wrap his arms around a child as his own. And he knows that he knows he's not the father. Oh, I commend all of you brothers out there who had the courage to be able to embrace a sister at that point of saying to her, my love for you is like the coffee that spills from my cup into the salt. And I got enough love for you, baby, that whatever you have, once we get this hookup, I want you to know it's mine too. That's love. Because love is not going to talk about all the foolishness of what had and what could and, and, and look at and then hold you down. No, no, love embraces it. And love, love is something that's strong enough to take in everything that's vile and everything that's out of order. Love, love takes it in and, and it puts it aside and, and it heals the broken. It, it brings peace to that which is upset. It, it begins to look at an individual as a person and, and embrace them. The spirit of oneness takes a special person. Joe wasn't quite there yet. But he did want to do this decent. You see, God's will does not conform to sociological norms. God's will, not my will, God's will. God can change the order of things. And so he does. That's what this concept about the immaculate conception is all about. You see, God says, I made the womb, and I made the womb. And the womb is not subject to the woman to exclude me. But since I made it, I can do with it what I want to do with it. And so God, in his own time, told Mary, because you have found favor. Don't miss that. Her pregnancy was not by chance. Her, her pregnancy was ordained because she had the characteristics, she had the temperament, she had the personality, she had the relationship with God that warranted her a visit from the angel who told her, this thing which will be of you is not of human form, it is of the Holy Spirit. He broke with the custom. He broke with what was physiologically correct. He who made the body can do whatever he wants to do with the body. I'm going to leave that alone. That's a sermon all in and of itself. But, but notice now, God does his thing, but he realizes that he has to do something with Joseph. So the text moves us. However, I like that, that word, that connecting, transitional word. However, knowing the circumstances are abnormal. However, knowing that there is public scrutiny. However, knowing that there is church folk who aren't going to approve it. I, if you've not listened to uh, Kanye yet, you ought to, you ought to look at him. That, 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 that last track is awesome where he talks about the, the kind of criticism he got for just attempting to make an album that would express the reality of a relationship 
with God. And he said his criticism came not from outside, but it came from those inside the church. We ought to see sometimes that we get in the way of things happening because we become so judgmental and so self-righteous until we can't receive folk where they are. listening ears. God can speak to us through any medium he desires. And as far as I'm concerned, Kanye is worth a listening ear. However, conformity to God's will always requires a sacrifice. Always. You see, this issue of sin, and, and I'm not talking about whatever your pet sin is, whatever rings your social media bell to chew on and broadcast. Because God knows in this day that we're living in, we got a whole lot of Homemade, self-taught directors and producers. And we can, we can permeate the air with, air with a whole lot of mess that has no substance and nothing at all because we, we heard from one of the most renowned attorneys in the land that truth is based upon who's saying it. Conformity to God's will always requires sacrifice. You know what it says? And he considered this, talking now about Joseph. How am I going to do this without bringing shame on Mary's household? How, how am I going to do this and maintain the status of a, a person of deep spiritual conviction? How am I going to do this? And, and, and maintain my, my dignity as a man and, and also allow the love that I have in my heart for my sister who I thought was one way, but I found out she's another. Lord have mercy. I'm going to tell you how. The word of God has to intersect with the human mind in order to transform one's attitude, one's opinion, one feels. Y'all hear that? The word of God has to intersect with the heart and mind of an individual so that you are able to accurately discern what you're going through and what's real and what's false. The, the, the word of God has to come and enlighten and, and shed some insight concerning our circumstances and our situation. So often we jump off when something happens and we fly off when things don't go the way we want to and we don't spend some time to find out and say, Lord, what do you have to say to me about this circumstance? Because everything that looks one may, way may not be what it really is and we need to know that we know that we know that we spend some time in prayer and in meditation and in reflection on God's word because we are to examine our circumstances. That's why the word says study to show yourselves approved unto God as workmen who have no need to be ashamed, who rightly divide the word of truth. Everything you hear may be accurate according to those who are presenting the information. But the circumstances and the facts behind it may not correlate together and you might find yourself jumping off on something that has no validity at all because you didn't take time to allow the word of God to inform you in order that your actions, your thoughts would be consistent with God's will in that situation. Look what he does. It says he was contemplating, how am I do this? An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. You know, if you 
If you do something mama used to say to me that I didn't understand at the time and I thought it was kind of crazy, she would often say, would come to her asking, can I do this? Can I go there? Can I have this? She would say, let me sleep on it. That's just good old fashioned horse sense, as they call it in the country. I know what I want to tell you, and I feel my experience in life has informed me that I can give you an answer to your question, but, but, but in light of where you are, because where you are is not where I was when something similar to this happened in my life. And, and I don't want to short circuit your experience. I don't want to short circuit your growth, your development by putting on you the stuff from my past and the, and the stuff that I've got in my trunk. I don't want it to bear on me so heavy until I don't allow you an opportunity that God may be presenting for you to grow. So I tell you what, son, let me sleep on. Oh. Sometimes we play God because we haven't slept on it. Sometimes we tangle things up because we didn't have the humility to know that we don't know everything. And every now and then we've got to pause and give God a chance to intersect where we are and to bring some information to us that would otherwise be unknown. Because notice now, when, when Joseph pondered in his heart what he's going to do, he went to sleep before he made a decision. Look at what the text said. The Lord appeared to him in a dream. Isn't that awesome? If you claim to be a believer, shouldn't God have access to you at times when others don't? You claim to know him. Do you have to be so hasty, so driven, so compulsive, to the point where you can't allow God to come in and touch you at a moment when the phone ain't ringing, the TV isn't on, you, you're not in the, on the, on, in, in the, in the court or, or you're not on the playground somewhere, but, but, but when you're all by yourself and, and God breaks in and, and reveals something to you, it says while he was sleeping, the Lord appeared Unto, notice, not them, him. God is never concerned about them. Woo! <laughs> when you are a believer, God is not going to ask for popular consensus. His instruction is not going to be loaded with what everybody thinks and how everybody feels. God knows what's best for us. And trust me, if you trust him, he will break in and he will let you know just what you. Oh, I dare you. Next time you get all opinionated, all prayed up, all spiritual. I dare you to say, Lord, I'm asleep on it. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah, because I need some time <laughs> to make sure that my, my line is clear. You, you, you notice uh, Brother Bowman wasn't satisfied until he realized that this line was clear. <laughs> 
it's not good. You can't hear. You, you, we want to be clear. We want to be able to receive it. Oh, sometimes we've got to let the garbage and the traffic and the noise and the chatter of life, we've got to let it quiet down. And we've got to get in a place where God can break in with that still, small voice and talk to us as a, as a father talks to their children. Do not be afraid. Lord have mercy. If you're doing God's will, or you think you're doing God's will, and it's impregnated with fear, something is wrong. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power. He's given us a spirit of love and a spirit of a sound mind. If fear is in it and it's got you worried about this and worried about that and you anxious about all this crap, you got to stop right there and say, wait a minute now, this may not be of God because where the Lord is, there's peace. There's joy. There's hope. And what's being done is done out of spirit of love. Don't miss the Advent message. These four concepts, God is requiring us to remember them all year long. Don't do anything unless these four concepts are operative. You've got to have hope. You've got to have peace. And praise the Lord, things aren't always going to go like you want them to go. So you've got to have some joy. You've got to know that no matter what is and what's around us, God is still with you and he gives you joy. That the world can't take away from you. And don't do anything. If it isn't love. Because love always takes the initiative. To do what's right. Based upon our understanding. Of what God is telling us. Joseph hears. Don't be afraid. Mary wasn't lying. Mary wasn't. Mary is all that she said she is. But Mary found favor. Oh, glory. Be careful. My brothers and sisters, how you shade stuff that happens in other people's life because they found favor and you think that they found a curse. Y'all got that? Be careful how you shade something that's happening in somebody else's life because it doesn't conform to your sense of normalcy. It's out of line with your morals and your values. It, it, it does not uphold your standards and your teaching. Well, well, who made you God? And who gave you a right to judge anybody? Oh, my book says, judge not lest she be judged. Oh, glory. My, 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 my book says to me, you let God do the judging. You just love. That's what you do. You find a reason. You find the nerve. You find the tenacity to take the initiative to be loving. Take up this thing that was conceived in her is God's doing. Oh, ain't that good? If something's happening in our lives, stop giving the devil credit for God's will. You're going through a tough time. Stop trying to find some reason to keep God in the posture of Santa Claus. No. He's God. He has all authority, all power in his hands. And if something is happening in your life that's not pleasurable, is not favorable, is not what you would choose to happen, and you know that you know that you know you're God's child, then just realize that he's with you and he's going to take you through it and embrace it. Because it's in the midst of embracing what God has for you that you find strength. It's, it's in the midst of embracing what God has for you that you find virtue. It's in the midst of embracing what God has for you that you get peace and joy. She 
she will have a son, Joe. It's not going to be your son. She's going to have a son. And since you are willing to take this initiative to sacrifice this conjugal relationship that occurs in the intimate moments of a man knowing his wife, since you're going to forego that for right now, I want you to know that I'm going to give you the privilege to name him. And you call his name Yeshua, Hebrew term, Savior, Deliverer, Redeemer, Sustainer. You're going to call his name Yeshua. You, you, he, he is going to be the very presence of me in human form before you. And, and you've been honored, you've been favored also, Joseph, to provide what a husband has to provide for a wife and what a man is supposed to provide for his home because I'm going to give you the privilege of naming him. I'm not going to let you choose what you're going to call him. You're not going to call him Monroe. No, no, Jethro won't do for this one. His name is going to be Jesus. See? Then he, 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 he impregnates Joseph's mind and heart with a word deeply embedded in the sacred text. And he tells him all of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophets. Look, a virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. If there is no birth here, then, then, then the presence of God is not available. You, you understand me? Because this, this, this time Emmanuel tells us that, that no matter where we are, once, once we embrace him, God is with us. And, and God knows, I don't know about you, but I need God with me. Well, this last point, we can go home. Sacrificial, sacrificial obedience validates Emmanuel. When you're able to sit on your stuff in order that God's stuff can be realized. You validate your relationship with God. Ooh -wee. Ah, when mama ain't saying what you want her to say, and you know everybody around you now is doing their thing. But mama said, not up in this house. And daddy tells you this is the way it's supposed to be because he has your best interest at heart and is trying to protect you from some of the things that are out there in life. And you decide, I don't think they are right. Well, there's a word that says, children, obey your parents in the law. For this is good. You know? Because he tells us if we're obedient to our parents, he will grant us longevity of life. See, no matter what they say, you got to back up to what God said. No matter what your heart feels, God is not concerned about your feelings. He's concerned about your activity and where your will is. Even though I know I'm justified in knocking the snot out of them, but when God says to me, touch not, when he tells me vengeance is mine, then I don't have the right to exercise my own privilege and freedom because I've got to bring it under submission to God's will. That's what they call sacrifice. What does it profit me to gain everything around me and lose my soul? Because I had to do it like the songwriter said. I did it my way. He said, notice. When Joseph woke out up, when he got up, remember I told you every now and then you got to say, let me sleep on it. Well, if you sleep on it, 
you're going to get up. You ain't going to sleep all day. Now, some folk do, but I don't advise it. I never could understand that because it gets me so. I'm, I got to be. But anyhow, when he woke up, the word says he did as the angel of the Lord commanded. He did what God told him to do. He didn't call his circle of friends. He didn't go to his favorite search engine and type in the subject and, 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 and looked at every, all of the different articles that popped up. He didn't call Ray Ray, Bay Bay, and Nay Nay and ask them what they thought, how they felt. He wasn't concerned about whether or not somebody was going to like his decision, agree with his decision, or hate his decision. He was not worried about the chatter and the talk and the noise that has already permeated the air and has already infused their community. He wasn't worried about what anybody said. It says he got up after having been inspired and he did what the Lord commanded. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, We've got to understand that it's not about what you think or how you feel. God has not called you to a social committee, and he's not giving you the right to go ahead and have a popular vote. Sometimes when God says to us do something, it's not to be questioned, it's to be obeyed. He did exactly what he was told. He took Mary as his wife. He took her as his wife. For this cause, leave mother and father and cleave together. That you may become one flesh. He did not have the normal relationships that, 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 that he was entitled to until her son was born. You see, there is something about this thing when you, turn, when you talk about his birth because his birth would be the significance of that which broke through first. And that always belongs to God. God is not a second fiddle. God. He says, bring me your best. He does not have relations with her until her son was born. Now, here's what we need to go home. And Joseph named him Jesus. You see, some of us are having a problem. And maybe we need to look at sacrificial initiative and see where we are. Do you really know God? Is he really low? Has he kept you, provided for you, healed you? Has he touched you, anointed you? Has he delivered you? Has he given you strength and talent and gifts? Has he been the one who put bread on your table and, and he put gas in your tank and he gave Activity to your limb. Is he God? Is, is he really in charge and in control of all things? We talk about God is in charge, but is he really Lord of Lords and King of Kings in your life? Check yourself. Check yourself. Look at all the things that you have said you know about God and ask the question how many individuals have I introduced to Jesus you see when Joseph took this initiative God gave him the privilege to name him Jesus. Oh, when he takes you through, 
the vicissitudes of life, the changes, the challenges, the wind blowing, <laughs> the rain falling. When God takes you through the, the bends and the winds and the twists and the curves of life, when, when God holds you up, when, 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 when the waters begin to rise and flood and want to really engulf you and destroy you, when God takes your newsy neighbors and nosy friends, when God takes your sanctifying church folk and, and your crazy brothers and sisters who you call family, when God takes that big old ball of wax of mess and he deals with it, don't you need, you need to tell somebody, I know a savior today. And his name is Jesus. I don't put no confidence in me. No, no. My confidence is in Jesus. I want to close this morning with something that happened on Monday. I drove that Mini Cooper when I got to Atlanta. It was unknown to me that a crack took place in the thermostat housing of the car, which caused a perpetual drip of antifreeze coolant that keeps the engine flowing at the correct temperature. Because of that, it overworked the fan that's on the front of the engine housing that blows and circulates air and it also turns that uh, radiator so that the water would circulate. Well, the fan was overworked. The next morning when I got up, this was Sunday night, Monday, got up, I wanted to see the heaters because Ron is dealing with a condition that we've been praying with him and them about. And so I said, I'm not going to, I don't want to see Ron and Roberta. I want to see Ron. And I want to give Roberta a chance to get to school to deal with the children. Because then Ron and I can do a brother to brother, imano, imano. And brothers, don't let nobody fool you. It doesn't take anything away from a man to be a friend to a man. Sisters always get this affirmation, but I just want to say to my brother, it's all right. There's nothing wrong with brothers crying together. There's nothing wrong with us putting our arms around each other and, and encouraging one another because we are brothers in faith. So I went over to my plate, one of my favorite places of shopping because they have uh, woodcraft was there. After I had done a thorough thorough survey of the store and walk through all the aisles at least two or three times and, and put back some stuff that I picked up when I first walked by because I didn't want to hear any uh, 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 well I'll leave that alone I, so I got what I need to get I went outside to crank that mini up so that I can make my way to the south side of, of Atlanta and the temperature index went off and about that time the pressure built up because the water wasn't circulating and the radiator that thermostat closed and it blew the top off the reservoir and I saw smoke coming from everywhere now I'm supposed to be in Florida by nightfall but I can't get there in this contacted many dealership. I think that's global is what they call it. So global, what a name. And the young man said to me, I said, well, I got an issue. He said, well, if you can get it here, I'll make an appointment so we can take care of it. And I explained my circumstances and my situation. Let me tell you something. Being honest about where you are and allowing people to meet you at your point of need is a critical reality. Everybody is now to take advantage of you. I talked to the young man on the thing, and he said to me, I said, well, can you extend to me the same courtesy that the folk in North Carolina does at Hendricks? He said, what's that, sir? I said, they give me a loaner 
while my vehicle is being worked on. He said, sir, we had that custom as well. However, all of our loan vehicles are out. Now, if one comes in, I'll make sure to reserve it for you. But we don't have one to offer you. He says, now, I'm going to schedule my technicians to be waiting on your car to arrive. So when it gets in, they can do the diagnostic and look at it. And I guarantee you, if we've got the parts available, I'm going to make sure we can put you back on the road tonight. And if not tonight, definitely by 12 tomorrow, if you get it here. He said, but your car, I, I'm sorry. I said, well, young man, I'll tell you what you do. I'm going to leave the repair of my vehicle in your hand and the technicians that work with me. But I'm gonna talk to my father and I'm gonna pray and ask him to handle my transportation. Because you see, I realize that God has access to stuff that you know I have. And so you take care of my car, but I know that I know who I Am. I'm a child of the Most High God, and I'm going to put my transportation situation in his hand, and I'm going to trust him to work it out. When we finally got told in, 3.30, he said, Greg Cutting, I was waiting on you, sir. Give me your keys. They're waiting for your car. I said, okay. He says, and your loaner is waiting on you. Won't he do it? Oh, thank God. When we're able to tell folk that we've got a living and abiding faith in a God who's able to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory, I'm telling you, God will show up. And he does it. I don't know about for y'all, but for me, airtime. Airtime. Don't know how. Don't know when. Really, I don't know why. But all I know, he works it. And all things work together to the good of those who love the Lord and are called upon his goodness. Praise the Lord. Amen.